Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming out to our SKACL training sessions. This is the training session for the squadron sponsoring committees and secretary position. So we're going to go through uh, the uh, workings of the executive committee in essence. I, uh, I believe we had been provided instructions. So try and not hold uh, any of your, uh, or hold your questions till the end. Remember this is being recorded. So if you turn on your video, you would get recorded along with that. So you may want to uh, leave your video off. And I think at the end, when we go back to the main room, uh, uh, we're gonna have a sort of an open question period there as well. Uh, committee makeup. So the executive committee is responsible for the day-to-day -day function of the SSC, uh, Squadron Sponsoring Committee. So it's made up of the uh, chair, vice chair, treasurer, and secretary. Those are your key roles. Sometimes the past chair in an, uh, in an advisory role. So as Richard had indicated, uh, you work closely together to the develop the yearly plan. And your plan uh, has to uh, align with the uh, officer's plan for the squadron. So you should be working very closely on your business plan with the officers. And as you saw, there was many activities that happened each month in the outline. And so you have something to work towards from that. Uh, you'll develop the tasks and jobs required to fulfill that plan. And in advance, you have a, a sense of uh, some of the things you need to achieve through the year uh, and with targets, months, and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, you also act as the official SSC officers of the nonprofit corporation as it, they are incorporated. So there are some requirements uh, that need to be completed by your treasurer or your secretary or the chair uh going forward and most of these positions are elected and uh that normally happens at your annual general meeting where uh the results of the vote and then who uh is taking over the the future roles really you don't have that many times where there's more than one person wanting a position it's normally the the parent volunteers know and uh, have a sense already of which positions you're going to be comfortable with so uh the one thing you should always uh just to avoid any sort of uh, problems uh, with activities that may involve parents and volunteers to be with cadets uh at at certain outings uh, to be fully screened, and that is one way to uh, ensure that there's no limitations on what you can do with the squadron and the cadets. So we'll start with the vice chair position. Uh, normally, the vice chair will assist the chair as needed. Uh, so if there's Sometimes the chair can't make a meeting. The uh, vice chair could run the meeting in, its, in, in the chair's place. Or if there were particular uh, responsibilities of the chair that they were unable to fulfill, the vice chair would have that authority to complete some of those. Normally, you know, they would run, uh, could be prepared to run a meeting Uh, usually, uh, the vice chair would be someone who has an interest in uh, actually running the squadron uh, parent committee uh, in the following year, so a little bit of succession planning. And normally, your, your vice chair doesn't have any specific role, so they're usually great for uh, advising uh, or assisting with other aspects of the uh, squadron activities. It's a good role for someone to get 
exposure to all the activities and to assist and learn the functions uh, of, of uh, potentially the chair role. Gives you a better sense of the overall operation of the squadron. Uh, usually a second year parent would be good. Uh, in the first year, they may have uh, you know, attended a few meetings and started to get a sense of how the squadron works and what the parent committee does. And by the second year, they could then start to get a little more engaged in certain aspects of the activities. And again, uh, need to be a fully screened volunteer. It's just a requirement. And the more parents that you can uh, get screened are, are, uh, becomes your resource base for activities where they can participate in assisting the uh, squadron with cadet activities. Secretary responsibility. For this, we have uh, a prior uh, volunteer who has recorded a video for us. So I'm going to load that. Just give me a moment. Welcome everyone. Thanks for coming out to the SASC Air Cadet League training sessions. This is the training session for the Squadron Sponsoring Committee Secretary position. The job of Secretary is going to vary from squadron to squadron, but I have listed some things you may be responsible for. Drafting the agenda and minutes for all committee meetings and distributing them to the members after the chairperson approves them. Communication, this is important, so I'm gonna to get to this on the next slide. Keeping a record of incoming mail and informing the members uh, and preparing any necessary replies when required. Filing for future reference, any working documents or reference documents uh, being passed around the committee. Uh, keeping in an orderly manner, all those documents relevant to the monthly meetings, such as agendas and minutes and uh, correspondence. Uh, you will serve as a member of the executive committee, which may involve special committee meetings as well. Some squadrons will have you keep an inventory of all the supplies belonging to the squadron and identify uh, the supplies with the squadron's name. Also, um, it is a requirement to be a fully screened volunteer. So communication is key. There can never be too much. It's important to have a relationship and open lines of communication with the officers. Usually it is the responsibility of the chairperson to go to the officers and the officers would in turn go to the chairperson. Some squadrons may have social meetings monthly with officers and SSC executive to help make sure things are running smoothly. And this also helps build relationships and makes volunteering more fun. As secretary, you can ensure that these important communications are happening and encourage these types of events. The officers may also attend SSC meetings to present a report, which is helpful in keeping parents up to date. Getting information out to parents is also key. It's key to getting participation from the parents and helps to recruit volunteers. Parents need to know what activities are going on with the cadets, what opportunities there are to volunteer and how they can contribute. Sometimes you just have to ask. Getting parents involved and having fun doing it is going to be the best way to recruit volunteers. The SASC uh, Air Cadet League holds virtual meetings the first Monday and Tuesday of the month. And all parents are encouraged to attend, to learn and ask questions and see what other squadrons are doing and what's coming up for league activities. And this just isn't open for secretaries or chairs. You can open this up to everyone in the squadron. And it's just a good opportunity for you to share things that is working well in your squadron, or if you need help with something, it's a good, good time to ask those questions as well. 
So many squadrons are using different ways to communicate to parents. Make your monthly meetings fun. Uh, keep meetings brief and um, understandable because sometimes you have people that are new. Um, sometimes you could have treats, um, drinks, uh, potlucks every once in a while, maybe prizes. Um, it, it helps if you make it more of a social experience uh, and getting parents to know one each other. And sometimes uh, they'll even develop friendships. So, so trying to make the meetings um, more enjoyable. If you sit and you talk about business for, for three hours, it's not going to get people coming back. For the parents not coming out, um, you can email out announcements, uh, minutes, fundraiser information, volunteer opportunities. Keep your social media and website up to date. Um, this might not necessarily be the job for secretary. It might be the officers or cadet looking after this. Um, but it's just important as secretary that you're reminding people when things um, need to be updated. So if you notice these things are are being undone, um, make sure whoever's responsible is is getting the information out. So make sure when you communicate that you are communicating clearly and regularly so people know where and when to look for all this information and just be consistent uh, so they know, OK, there's going to be announcements after after cadets or they'll know to look for emails or or check for Facebook for updates or or a spot on the website. And if you do those, um, what works for one family doesn't always work for everyone. So if you do that, um, you know, if you have these things, these communication methods out in multiple places, it is better. So the struggle is real uh, with new executive members and never knowing what the last executive did, uh, what the responsibilities are. Um, so the Sask Air Cadet League um, a few years ago came up with a way to help. Um, and that's the Sask Air Cadet League Gmail accounts. I'm not going to go into too much about this as there's training available on the Sask Air Cadet League YouTube channel. Um, so please check check that out. So there are Gmail accounts. Um, this is how the league communicates out to the squadrons. Uh, sometimes it is a struggle for us uh, as there is so much turnover getting who the current chair is, who's the current treasurer. So when we need to get information out to the squadrons, we email these mailboxes. Um, so it's important that you set these up and that someone at the squadron um, is looking for them. Or And you can forward, um, yeah, so there's email addresses for all these positions, chair, secretary, treasurer, vice chair, screening. Uh, and if you just use one or two, you can forward the other ones, um, you know, like if the chair is looking after and and probably most emails maybe go to the chair or the treasurer from league, just just uh, forward the other mailboxes to the chair so that if they happen to be screening information that goes out to the screening email that the chair would at least get that communication. Uh, Google Drive. Um, Google Drive is also available um, and you can store documents. So you can use this um, from year to year. So you can store your minutes, agendas, letters, processes, any important documents there. So this way when somebody takes over your role um, and you're gone and maybe you're not, you know, nobody was mentored, somebody's new, they have sample agendas, sample minutes, sample letters for businesses. Um, available. So they're not recreating the wheel every time. Um, and squadrons can share with other squadrons there as well. Uh, so if you have a good handbook or you have something good, you can share it so that other squadrons can look there as well. Uh, so it's great for collaborating with other squadrons. The email and the drive. If you have a question about what a another chair is, there is a way to email all the chairs in Saskatchewan. Um, if you have questions about their responsibilities or uh, secretaries or treasurer, you can email them all uh, to get advice. Um, so not necessarily the responsibility of the secretary, but just some extra ideas I wanted to throw at you as takeaways. 
You could possibly delegate them to members. Maybe you're already doing this stuff, um, but you could also delegate them to members at large or volunteers uh, to help with. So some ideas that some squadrons have done um, are uh, handbooks. Uh, so they have handbooks uh, with cadet just information about about the squadron, like where to look for communication and what to expect and when you meet and where you meet. And um, at one point there was a sample of a handbook on on Google Drive. So have a look there uh, and you could get an idea. Welcome letters uh, for new cadets and returning cadets and uh, so you could work with officers to to develop and and again save to Google Drive uh, a template for future for future years. So you're not having to again redo this every year. Some squadrons have done newsletters, and you can do an annual newsletter or however frequent you want. Uh, we had done one when I was at Forty One Hercules, and the cadets submit the articles and pictures. So it was a way to get the cadets involved as well. So I, we worked together with with a couple senior cadets, and uh, it was just it was great all around. Uh, you can add thank yous to sponsors in your newsletters. It can be used as a recruitment tool as well, and you can include pictures of volunteers having fun to encourage more volunteers. You can uh, oh, and volunteer recognition is uh, also another important thing that you can do in the squadron. Uh, you can check with the league because the league has some rewards and certificates that are available for, for volunteers, but you can also do a fund certificates at the squadron level and present them um, at your ACR, um, get fun, be creative and um, Again, so some of these other resources other squadrons have already, and you don't necessarily have to recreate the we the wheel. Uh, reach out to your league rep or other squadrons uh, using the the Gmail accounts, um, or if you come attend the monthly meetings, um, it's the first Monday and Tuesday of the month, um, and the invitation should go to that chair email address. So. Anyone and everyone is welcome to come uh, to those meetings to get ideas. Uh, if you're having problems, again, just uh, ask for help from your league rep or at these meetings, and there's there's a lot of people out there. So you're not alone, and we're here to help. So thanks again for, for coming out today. Uh, I appreciate it. I'll just leave you here with my email address. It's leslieb at skacl.ca. Have a good day, everyone. Well, thank you, Leslie, for your presentation. That was appreciated. I will right, we'll just get reset. So uh, just to follow up on Leslie's uh, video, Second or third year parent for a secretary is great. And again, fully screened is uh, just a requirement for all of them. Treasure responsibility we won't touch on because uh, Brian is giving a more detailed uh, overview in the other breakout room. So you can get that. But mainly responsible for tracking expenditures and revenue of the squadron. Uh, any bill payments and uh, also would be responsible for issuing tax receipts if it's a charitable nonprofit, which our goal is to have everyone in that uh, domain and fully screened. Committee chair. So the committee chair position of the SSC is responsible for a certain aspect of the SSC plan. Uh, Committee chair positions include uh, a list of uh, activities. So it could be uh, fundraising, volunteer screening, effective speaking, curling, photography, food services, maybe transportation, public relations, awards for cadets and volunteers, or any other uh, 
uh, activity as, as required. Almost think of it as a, a member at large. And normally those uh, committee chairs would report the status at SC, SSC meetings for whatever activity they're working on. Volunteer screening is uh, a key uh, component for the, the uh, committee and uh, it's vital uh, to protect the cadets and volunteers, but also to uh, ensure that your volunteers are able to participate in all aspects of the squadron activities. Uh, this volunteer screening person would uh, ensure that the applications are available to all members. Uh, instructions on the application include, you know, getting your uh, CPIC and your vulner vulnerable sector screening. And also on the application, there's a spot where they would put a couple of references. And so normally the volunteer screening chair would interview the uh, candidate and also uh, speak with the references and then sends that information into the uh, provincial committee. And now we've added uh, a picture goes with that because they're going to be creating the uh, screening cards for all uh, volunteers with a picture. And, you know, and that'll include the uh, expiry date as well uh, for how long the volunteer screening is good. And like I say, the uh, aircadetleague.com Aircadet in the library section is where you can find the forms for the volunteer screening. Uh, normally, when new uh, parents join, one of the things, you know, when they have the open house at the, in September, uh, uh, it's not a bad plan to work with your officers so that you have maybe have one table set up where the cadets and parents go to register the cadet. And then afterwards, you have a second table set up where the parents get directed over to the uh, SSC and there you supply them with all the material that you want them to know about dates for your meetings, maybe uh, give them a, a, a screening package, one or two, and uh, try and engage them right on that first night. And they almost think they have to complete all these things because they don't know. <laughs> so it's not a bad, a bad approach to be proactive like that. And hopefully, you know, you get some out to the first meeting. Uh, I've seen uh, some squadrons that sort of entice volunteers and parents to show up and they will do potlucks, for example. So everyone brings a snack so that there's a, a little bit of a social event. It's always tough, uh, as Richard spoke to earlier with the COVID and the inability to interact is a struggle. So getting creative with ways to meet with your parent committee. Maybe you meet at a McDonald's informally or something, you know, things like that. Fundraising chair. Normally that's, uh, you know, going to be whatever ideas are generated at the squadron level. Uh, Richard spoke to a couple of examples, you know, poinsettia sales versus, uh, peanut sales and which ones do better or bottle uh, drives, things like that. Uh, in Saskatchewan, the local Sarcans, you can set up, uh, and some squadrons have done this, set up an account at Sarcan, for example, and uh, share that code with uh, anyone so that if they want to take their bottles in without doing a formal bottle drive, they can just uh, put it in and put the name of the squadron account on their deposit. And then that funds go straight to the squadron. So there's lots of different ways to get creative in that. 
there's large, large fundraising activities or small ones. Uh, some are league operated. We've been trying our best to uh, provide fundraising opportunities for squadrons that don't allow them or don't require them to do anything other than uh, spread the word like our 50 50 for example and so when uh, members in your community go to uh, support through a 50 50 purchase they can actually select your squadron to support and so we're trying to do things like that that avoid engaging the cadets uh, which is restricted now but also enabling the parents to participate with less of a, a, an effort in terms of just uh, networking and uh, you know that will be the same thing with our upcoming draw for the tiger moth flight in saskatoon where you're going to uh, be selling a ticket for 25 dollars, and that'll allow anyone to buy it online and the the prize includes money to get to saskatoon a hotel room and then the opportunity to go for a flight through the aviation museum different ideas uh, i've seen so many different types it's just uh, uh the options are limitless so uh you work the fundraising committee chair would work with the uh, executive committee and establish goals on what, what do we need to fundraise for what are some of those extra costs there are uh changes on the department of national defense side relative to some of the funds that they have available and i believe they're changing a little bit of the requirements to access those funds at a squadron level so uh, going forward it will be important to determine what those restrictions are on their funds and it's only for the things that you need to uh, do that won't be covered by the department of national defense so there could be a little less of a requirement for fundraising on the squadron side going forward, but there will always be something to raise funds for, whether it's a Easter trip or some other extracurricular activity that is not necessarily covered through Department of National Defense. And normally, as the fundraising chair, you're trying to engage all of the parents in the squadron. Maybe you're sending home uh, three boxes of chocolates that everybody has to, to sell three or, or a box of them or however it works, you know. And again, the more screen volunteers you have, the better. We also have those other league activities that are run. Uh, effective speaking and curling as we talked about effective speaking has been very positive and has been one of the uh, really great additions that league has provided and the response from cadets has been really positive they enjoy the challenge and you can just see them progress through their ability to speak in front of audiences etc and uh, really empowers them to to be uh, positive young adults uh, some of the responsibilities for both effective speaking and curling uh, running local practices uh, providing supplies in a location to run the program normally with effective speaking if you can get a few uh, people uh, volunteers to watch the cadets and have some forms to uh, which are available to just uh, identify areas for improvement for the cadet to work on and those types of practice sessions like that it's all great attend zone and uh, potentially provincial competitions a lot of these uh, the curling is on hold right now of course but uh, the effective speaking is being run virtually and uh, you can still practice in person in small groups, so that's available. But the cadets also have to get familiar and well-versed in how to present themselves effectively online. That's another uh, role that the chair could of effective speaking could identify and maybe have practice sessions, et cetera, things like that. These are, uh, like I say, league-run programs. 
and you want to work with your squadron officers to inform cadets. Uh, so you, you set up some activities and you get the squadron officers to uh, tell the squadron when and where and what, and they are normally very supportive of uh, working with us. So. Uh, photography program we've run a, uh, for a couple of years. I think uh, we missed out the last year, but uh, normally what you try and do, is, and there's different categories. Uh, so as the photography uh, program chair, you want to try and engage cadets and even the, the parent adults uh, to submit photos of different things they've done in the program or things that they're interested in. And we do offer some cash prizes. And, uh, you know, the photos are uploaded to uh, the contest at skacl.ca. Uh, there's not really a lot to do in terms of running this particular program other than trying to engage everyone to submit photos. Uh, include name squadron number picture name email and phone number so really it's just getting the information out uh, to the squadron through the cadets and the officers and engaging them to uh, participate through uh, submission and the form is uh, on our league website at skacl.ca that's it promote promote uh, screening is always required. Curtis, are you up for speaking to the awards? And I'll just move the screen through as we go. You go right ahead, Gary, because I never got the speaker notes on it. Okay. I don't think I have any, actually. Apply for SKACL Volunteer Awards by September 30th yearly. And those are available at SKACL. Uh, Four-year cadet award is, needs to be submitted by April 15th. Ten-year volunteer award by March 15th. So for any volunteers in your squadron that are getting up to the 10-year mark, you want to be aware of that. Uh, just ask people, how long have you been here? <laughs> or how, you know, how long have you been volunteering? Uh, because we need to queue you up for an award if you're uh, year nine or whatever it might be. It's good to just know uh, how many uh, volunteers and how long they've been engaged in the squadron. Uh, a a ACC63 at aircadetleague.com is one of the forms for the volunteer award. You can uh, apply for national volunteer awards by March 1st. And a list of those are going to be on the aircadetleague.com website. And the form for that is ACC50. The one thing that uh, doesn't cost any money and it provides recognition is to try and recognize any of your volunteers for their work. It's a, a great benefit and people appreciate being recognized. There's lots of various roles that can be performed at a squadron food services so work with the ceo and the executive to provide food when required uh, curtis you could speak to uh what kind of food normally uh, gets sent out for some of these activities versus what when you were chair at 41 what you did to try and get different food <laughs> are you speaking about saskadat or in general no, just at the squadron level. So you would go, you know, if they did a, a, a retreat, it could have been at Saskatchewan or there's been outings to other locations where external food was provided, correct? For sure. Uh, one of the biggest things that D&D &D requires, uh, and they're starting to, they, or at least they were before COVID, they were starting to lax up a little bit on it, but they would like to have a Red Seal chef for any meal that is prepared. Uh, by the by, the parents or provided by the parents. Um, in a lot of cases, if it was going to be a local activity, we would contract uh, Pita Pita or Mr. Sub or you know 
uh, 41 where I was, did a lot of, uh, did a lot of work with, uh, what's the name of that, that one of the sub places anyways, and we had a relationship with them. So they gave us a pretty good deal. So if you go out into the community and see what you can, see what you can do, you might be able to get food at a reduced rate. Uh, when it came to providing food at Saskadet in the last number of years, we have been getting uh, a local company, a, lo a local restaurant to pre-prepare all of our meals for us. So all we had to do was reheat it or, or heat it, whether that was, you know, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, most of the food for a Saskatoon event or for a, a D and D directed activity is provided by D and D in the form of ration packs. But if you want to provide, and this is one of the reasons why we fundraise, if you want to provide a meal outside of that or in conjunction with that, so we would provide a breakfast from the sponsoring committee. So the sponsor committee would pay for that. Lunch would be the, uh, the ration pack, which the cadets are required to at, eat at least one of those in a day. And then we would provide a supper. And this is where the fundraising comes in because some of that stuff can be pretty expensive if you're trying to feed a hundred people. So, you know, that's kind of where we're at with that. Gary. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Curtis. So travel, uh, sometimes you want to work with officers when transportation is required. Uh, not all transportation from D and D is covered. Like, uh, normally they will cover transportation if you're going say to the, uh, gliding in the spring, one of the, the gliding sessions, uh, they will cover the costs of transportation, but uh, some squadrons do special activities. So they uh, will travel uh, to a, a museum or uh, a number of locations uh, over Easter. And those are sometimes, those costs are over and above what Department of National Defense will allow uh, for payment on. There's also uh, Camp Saskadet. If uh, some squadrons are farther away than the minimum requirement that D&D uh, &D has for traveling to that location, any costs incurred are over and above what they would cover and therefore uh, need to be raised by the squadron. So there's a, a number of situations that arise throughout the year that may incur extra costs relative to transportation. And so that's one of the things that you would work with your uh, uh, officers at the squadron to determine where, are, where in the business plan or our plan for the upcoming year, do we foresee that there may be shortfalls relative to uh, funding? And then those start to become some of our targets because we estimate what's it going to cost to do this type of thing. And now we have a bit of a target and a goal for what we want to fundraise to. And then we engage our uh, fundraising act, uh, chair. Right. Uh, speaking to that, all travel that we are responsible for are league directed activities. So, for example, curling. If you have to travel somewhere in Saskatchewan for a curling event, we are required to pay for that. Same with effective speaking. If you if we're not doing it online, if we're doing it in person, we are responsible for providing transportation and sometimes accommodation for the cadet and their uh, and and one parent. Yes. Public relations normally works with the secretary to educate the public about the Air Cadet program. Uh, we had spoke, uh, Leslie mentioned uh, Google accounts. So this is something we introduced a couple of years ago to try and have a, a structure for all the squadrons and uh, directories, et cetera, as, uh, as mentioned to try and support the uh, squadrons that there is training available on SKACL on our YouTube channel for using Google accounts and uh, Gmail accounts. This is how 
we as a league try to communicate out to the squadron. So it's important to have someone registered and using these accounts. If you need to reach, uh, need help to reach out to your league rep, and they can make sure you can get set up with this type of thing and help with additional training. We do have one director, a uh, past cadet, uh, Jay Shaw, and he's really become a, a little bit of our technical representative for uh, this. And he's assisted many squadrons in getting uh, working through this. So uh, Google Drives again, uh, you can store things. Uh, this is that same uh, screen, just so you get a sense that everyone has that at skacl.ca. If you sign in and uh, get that sorted out, it doesn't hurt. Go look at the uh, uh, instructions on our YouTube channel for that. And uh, that if you have questions after that, reach out to uh, Jay or your uh, director or any one of us on the executive, and we'd be more than happy to assist. And for that, I would like to say thank you for volunteering. And uh, any questions, you can get a hold of us at info at skacl.ca or call the office and speak with Richard. And again, thank you for volunteering. We also encourage questions when we go back to the main session. But getting back to that Google Drive for a quick second, Gary, uh, one of the things that I'm trying to promote is citizenship trips. So if your squadron goes someplace and you find something really interesting or you know something that, that provides value to the program, to the cadets on one of your citizen trips, we're trying to build a database of things to do, say in Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton, things that you've done, places that you've gone so that we can share that with the whole province so that other people that are planning citizen trips will have a resource. Excellent. There. So now I think we, we can just leave it open now. And if anyone has questions or would like to, to chat, uh, feel free, turn your video on, open your speakers, your mic. We, we have a few minutes and we can just talk informally until they uh, ask us to go back to the main room, if that's okay. Any, any questions from anyone? Gary, it's Justine Walton from Indian Head. How are you? Good. Hi, thanks. Good. I just wanted to say thank you very much for including that Google information. I had forgotten about it, and I don't know that we're using it. So I'm for certain going to take that back. And the video from Leslie was fantastic. Um, I'm actually quite excited to share that with our secretary. She's quite new, and she's a little uncertain at times with where we should be getting some information or how we should be recording it. So Thanks to Leslie, too, for that video. It was fantastic. Yes, absolutely. We appreciated that. <laughs> Trust me, we did. Oh, I know. She's a bit of a rock star, that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was very well done. I, I did enjoy that as well. And, and it'll be really good for, for new um, resources for people coming in to take, to take those positions. Maybe um, in a future one of these, we could do more to talk about what the responsibility of the directors is. Absolutely. Because some uh, of these folks might move up from their squadron into directors when their kids retire from cadets. That is absolutely a whole uh, plan for the future to definitely speak directly to the directors and get some of that information out. To be honest, we haven't really been all that organized over the last number of years. And with this resource that we're doing right now, COVID has kind of forced us online. So it's a good opportunity to record these things and, uh, you know, build our resource library. We've been trying for, I don't know, what's it been, Gary, four or five years to get Google up and running and get people using it. And this is going to start pushing people in that direction, I hope. I, I think, too, that if, if you make that a priority, like when we set up 574 out here, 
we made it a priority. You guys have to have this and you have to use it if you're with that committee or on that part of the executive and it's worked very well. Oh, granted, granted, Kari, the, the issue has been though that people have sort of been operating in a vacuum up till now, yep. doing their own thing and not, yep. you know, and not, not sharing. Like we've been promoting it at AGMs as far back as I can remember to try and get this Google up and running. And it sure would have been nice if we would have, you know, if, if the squadrons would have been using this before we got in, because then we wouldn't be a year behind on the curve trying to trying to catch up. But it's starting to come together now, so that's positive. It is. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, if, if we have a moment and Jay feels like it, he could actually just he share could. a screen and show us where the YouTube video channel is that... Uh, people could go and and watch some of those videos on how to use uh, the drive and that kind of thing. Sorry, Jay. Yeah. Bottom oh, right no worries. Corner. I'll, I'll uh, post a link to the YouTube video, uh, the channel, so that everyone has it. Excellent. Thanks. Really good idea. 